Welcome back, y'all. This is another episode of Me, Bay, and Jay. I'm me, that's Bay, and this is Jay, and we are your favorite tripod. So today, as you can see, Jay is holding the champagne, he's holding the bubbles because we are popping bottles. We are celebrating our one. 100 subscribers. So this is all about saying thank you. Thank you for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, for engaging, for supporting. All of those things are what we're popping this bottle for today. That's right. That's right. And stay tuned because when we come back, we'll be having some Q&A and answering some of the questions you guys have been asking us and leaving us in the comments. So stay tuned for that. But pop the bottle first. That's right. Oh! oh! Welcome back. So we definitely want to give a toast, tripod toast, um, to our 100 subscribers on YouTube. That's and right. just, you know, really being grateful for the support, the questions, the engagement. And so, you know, we do like to keep it kind of quick so that you can hop in, hop in, see us in under 10 minutes. But tonight, or today, we're just going to be drinking, sipping, and answering some of these questions. So let's hop into it. See, grab the first question. Mm -hmm. So our first question is from Annie G. She wants to know more about the relationship between the two women of the house. So what can we tell her about our relationship? What should we tell her about our relationship, Jeff? What can, oh, you, man. What can you say <laughs> about um, the relationship between the two women in the house? So the two women of the house they really connect on um, different things like planning traveling and budgets and family outings and different things like that. So they have this kind of relationship where they get excited with each other about doing those kind of things. They rarely argue. When I say rarely argue, it's like almost non-existent. But... True. If they're not happy with each other, they will not speak to each other for, you know, a couple hours yeah, or something like day. that. You know, because we're still functional adults. We still have a <laughs> household to run. So, yeah. you know, we, we tend to try to get over things pretty quickly with good communication, open, honest communication. Um, so, you know, I'll say that about them. You know, you guys never really argue. Mm -hmm. You guys uh, definitely, you know, have a passion between you mm -hmm. uh, for the things that you both connect on. And, you know, that's really beautiful to watch. On, I mean, it happens all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll say that all that sounds really nice and pretty. Um, but we are here to talk about polyamory and to talk about some of the difficulties, some of the challenges, as well as some of the triumphs. And so we've said it a number of times. The three of us have all been together for the last 10 years. And so the reality is that the relationship between myself and Letitia is a relationship that has changed the most. You know, it's moved through cycles, right? It was one thing in the beginning, it changed into something a little bit different, and then now here we are today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, T? Um, I think if I have to describe it, I would say, you know, through all the trials and tribulations that we have been through, through all of the challenges of really trying to understand each other, to put, you know, oneself in the other person's shoes, to not take it personally, all those things. Um, I think it boils down to the fact that if something were to happen to Jeff, not that anything's happening to him, but if something were to happen to Jeff, me and Heather would still be together. She would still be my life partner. We would, yeah, we would be life partners. Yeah. Um, and so I think all the all all of the dramatic events that have happened over the years they don't overshadow the fact that we would spend our lives together yeah. with each other that we would um, choose each other we, we would choose each other yeah. yeah so that's a beautiful thing <laughs> <laughs> that makes me happy all right 
All right, so All right, we got next. that one. I mean, and again, like, if there are more specific things, you guys can continue to comment. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know if that answered the question or specifically, you know, what you're asking because it's so, that's that's a broad one. Super broad. I know, but anyway. Well, we try to answer it as best as possible. Yeah, so Jeff, <laughs> yes. give us another one. Okay, so, so we also have from uh, Angel6, how do y'all handle arguments? Yes. And, and wait, grab the other one too, because what do disagreements look like? Okay. So what do disagreements Chantree look like? Chantree said, what do disagreements look like? And then how do we handle and those then, arguments? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do you want me to say it again? That's what you, you want no. Me? Okay. All right. I, I mean, I'm sorry. if you want to. Anyway, so Angel Six also uh, chimed in and asked, how do y'all handle arguments? And also, in addition to that, Chantree said, what do disagreements look like? And um, to answer both of those questions, because they're both pretty much tied into each other, but um, to answer both of those questions, we're human. Yeah. And arguments and disagreements happen, and they happen, you know, when they happen, you know, uh, sometimes they happen in the most inopportune times. And just like anybody else, you know, we handle it as best as we can in the mm -hmm. moment. But what we don't do is we don't disrespect each other. We don't cross boundaries mm -hmm. that we know are gonna mm -hmm. you trigger know, trigger someone our partner yeah you know so we're not pushing buttons mm -hmm. and so because we're trying to manage the argument and uh, instead of letting it kind of go ablaze then yeah. you know we yeah we're able to kind of control the the negative aspects of really what an argument looks like and what it is and um, that helps us basically come to um, a resolution and to also try it gives us an opportunity to listen to what the other person is saying and try to understand where they're coming from and try to put ourselves in their shoes and when we do that I, I, conscious listening always breeds understanding so that's one of the main things that helps us get through those difficult times the, the, you guys the, that took a lot of practice and we're not we're not perfect at it for sure I would say me and Jeff, we, we can fight or argue really, really badly. We've been together for so long, um, and we can say things that really gets underneath each other's skin and, and yell and things like that. Um, <laughs> a lot. Yeah, it, yeah. It, and then and for, for me and him, like that burst of fire like happens, and then we're over it literally in 15 minutes yeah yeah but the that burst of fire is no fun for anyone it's no fun for the household It's no fun for anyone that's watching us go through it mm -hmm. um and that you know through therapy and I through say, I, I told on them multiple times <laughs> yeah. in therapy where i'm yes. like well they were arguing <laughs> and they were not using the right language yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we get told on um and that's true, and we can argue yeah. like how family can, and you know we've gotten good. Yeah, we've gotten better. You guys have gotten a lot better. We've, we've gotten, gotten better. a lot better. Guys exactly, gotten a lot better. It, that's exactly what In I'm trying to say. In recent months, yes. Months, yes. Okay. In recent In months. Recent months. <laughs> I, I mean, I like to think it's a little bit. You know, they're few and far between. Yeah, we don't. It would be few and far between. It's not a constant thing, but yeah. when it happens, it's like. It's huge, yeah. Why is the volcano erupting? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think, too, you know, I really want to make no, sure that we are giving some examples, like giving examples of what disagreements look like, examples of how we really handle the argument. Like, that's a good example for you guys. But there are times where it might be Letitia and I, I don't want to say against Jeff, but like Letitia and I in agreement and, you know, Jeff is baffled and he can't understand. Because I'm a man. And you know how we do. We had a disagreement. It was super minor. But it was like, we were on the way to a club. And you were trying to wear a tank top. <laughs> and Letitia was like, I didn't buy them tank tops for you to be wearing them to the club. <laughs> now, she doesn't go to the club. So, I, so she wasn't coming. She was saying this from the bed. And... I had been out with Jeff with a tank top on where we had been turned away. And so she was yelling about the fact that the tank tops 
were not for him going out. And I was yelling about the fact that I was not trying to do all of this just to go out and get turned around at the door. So it was literally both, both of us of yelling us. at him yeah. like, you know, and he's at the closet. Ah, you know, then I don't know what he said, but he changed his shirt. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. In this happy case, wives. happy wives, <laughs> happy, life. happy lives. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then when Jeff and I argue, it's, um, it's really intense. Mm -hmm. It's usually because of differing opinions in business. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's the large majority yeah. of our disagreements. So. But, but we work together every day. They, <laughs> so it's, you know, they can't get away from each other. The two of them. Yep. Well, they you know, are, but I've heard. Somebody say a long time ago that if you can't argue with somebody that you work with, you can't work with them. Mm. Well, clearly, y'all are meant the to working work with relationship each other. shall continue. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's so funny to be because they because they do work together on the outside to look in, and I'm always like, you each ask each other the the same things that you get mad about. You ask each other to do all the time. So whether, you know, getting up early or doing something late or something running over time, they do that to each other, but yet it, it drives both of them. Yeah. yeah. So I usually just tell Jeff that he's right. Yeah, I usually am. I mean. So yes. anyway, um, <laughs> so that's what disagreements can look like. <laughs> And how do we handle arguments? I think you kind of really well, addressed that. I think the the other big thing to remember is that, you know, one of us is, is going to say I'm sorry at some point. One of us is going to come in and really, we want a resolution. We don't want to continue to have this tension and energy inside the house. It's no fun. I, did, I think that's a big It's point. no fun yeah. for anyone. Yeah. So, um, I would say typically it's Jeff, it's Jeff. who will come... You know, and make it right. Tenderly, right. Yeah. Whoever is calm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hug it out. It's him. Let's That's not right. let's not fight. And if it was my fault, I'm the he first to say I'm it. sorry. Easily. You know why? Because it was my fault. And accountability yeah. and responsibility in relationships is of the utmost importance, right? Because sometimes that's all we need is somebody to just say, you know what, that's my bad. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my fault. I'm sorry. Right? Really good. So, so good at it. So easy, he's, though. So easy. He's a model for it. <laughs> <laughs> he is. A, I'm second best. She's the worst. I'm, I'm always working on it. <laughs> That's I'm a perfect way. I'm always working on it. <laughs> you know? She's always working like, on it. Like, literally just before, you know, I said, I'm sorry, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember looking at her like, I hope you're going to say it back. Because he just said, I'm sorry. And I did say it. I mean, it was she did through clenched teeth. That's okay well, though, because you have to know your partner. That's right. And I, I take that. I accept right. that. That's, that was genuine because you know you understand your partner. You understand what it takes for yeah. them to, to get to those places. So I appreciate that. To give it, yeah. That's right. Okay. All right. So next question. All right. Stop so, so. Our next set of questions comes from Alicia, and she sent quite a few, and so I think that they're pretty easy to kind of move through, so I'm going to roll through them. So the first one was, who are your polyamorous role models? We don't have any. Don't have any. Yeah, we don't have any. It didn't, we didn't model our relationship off of anyone or... Um, any historic movements in polyamory, mm -hmm. it was much more of leaning into something that really felt right. That's right. Mm -hmm. At the time and giving it time mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. allowing, you know, that seed to kind of grow. So yeah. that piggybacks into the next one, which was, are you modeling a particular spiritual or cultural tradition or did we just make it up? I mean, we didn't make it up didn't because there's a whole history of polyamory. But it's definitely not rooted in anything spiritual mm -hmm. or any kind of cultural tra tradition. And actually, if you have seen our episode on um, polygamy versus polyamory, we talk about that. We talk about how polygamy tends to be... Link it. We'll link it. Oh, yeah. Polygamy tends to be rooted 
in spiritual or cultural traditions and practices where polyamory um, is not. And for us especially, our polyamorous relationship was, Sorry. again, something that we just leaned into because it felt right. Yeah. I, you know, we didn't have the role models because no. this was basically a new frontier for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't have anybody to look towards mm -hmm. to say, okay, this, this is how they operate and this is how they make it work. We had to figure it out kind of mm -hmm. like the yeah. hard way, you know what I mean? Like yeah. on our own. And it was the hard way. It was, mm -hmm. it was, which is, which is why they, you know, Colleen was saying they were poly elders, right? Yeah. yeah. Cause we've kind of gotten past the, the honeymoon phase, the trying to make it work phase, you know, the differences phase. And really we're just in the, what the, the just kind of like living, living life phase, yeah. right? Yeah, making it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. We, yeah. you know, we went with what felt good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I have to reiterate how important peace is to us, that we protect our peace at all costs. Yeah. Um, and back then, you know, 10 years ago, when I'm thinking about the first house that we lived in together, the three of us before children or anything like that, um, it was simply about what made us feel good because it was the three of us, we weren't necessarily worried about what outside people were saying because we were having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that was enough for us at that period. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, we've, we've mentioned it in some of our other episodes. I know where we talked about, like, yes, that year one at mm -hmm. the first house, that was, it was easy breezy mm -hmm. because yeah. <laughs> we were all in agreement that we weren't sharing this with anyone else. And so... The um, being closed or uh, being in the closet, if you will, was a conscious decision from everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as we moved into that year two mm -hmm. and three and four and, you know, I was the party that was like ready to have this, ready to be open. And Letitia was really, really not ready to be open. And Jeff was kind of stuck in the middle. We didn't have any polyamorous role models. Mm -hmm that we could look to and say, well, how did you all deal with this? Mm -hmm. You know, and so that that made our years two through four exceptionally difficult and yeah. painful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I think also the most important, because those were the years that we had to face those realities, face those challenges and insecurities that we had within ourselves. Sure. This is the first glimpse of them, of the mirror that we got, right? And, and then having to look at that reflection and say, well, how do I change this about myself? You know, why do I do these? Why am I worried about this? And trying to overcome those things that are like wired, hardwired mm -hmm. in you, you know, based on society or culture or upbringing. whatever that is, or mm -hmm. upbringing, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one of the most difficult challenges that you can undergo, really, in my opinion, is that is facing that, that, that reflection and mm -hmm. rising above it and becoming better than it. And those years, although challenging, are some of the most important, I think, and influential in our relationship. It was a constant mirror up to yourself. Exactly. Constant. Yeah. And that's hard. It's difficult. You, you, I mean, as an adult in your, you know, 30s, you think you know which, what's going on. All right, so, and with that, we're going to wrap this one up. Um, we've gotten a lot of really great questions from you guys, so we'll be trying to answer your questions as much as we can over the next, you know, few videos or so, uh, or whenever we get a chance. But, you know, be patient with us because you guys sent a lot of great questions that are going to yeah. take some time to get through. Yeah. And they deserve some exploration, you yes. know, and I think that even just trying to give kind of some some answers here, it's clear that we have things that we do really want to unpack and to dedicate, you know, a couple of episodes to yeah. give y'all a, a three-part series so that, you know, we can really be able to, like, explore it, you know. And, um, and I like to say things like, you know, to really excavate it, to really get in there, get under it, you know, recognize um, where we are today um, yeah. from where we came. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think one of the things that Letitia and I really talked about um, was being able to use this, you know, in some ways. Like, you know, Letitia mentioned it in therapy. Yes, I've told on them in therapy. We have been to two different therapists. Um, and, you know, the last one we 
just kind of stopped working with because it wasn't as much, it just wasn't a good fit anymore. Yeah. And so one of the things that we said in figuring out, like, as we begin to address things here, it's really an opportunity for us to look back and to really explore things that we probably should revisit mm -hmm. and talk about some more and make sure that, you know, old wounds are healed and, you know, have this as an opportunity to only just further strengthen our the relationship. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, and grow in our bond, right? Yeah, and yeah. grow in that bond. Like, you know, have this time to, to reflect. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's great things to reflect on. There are some not so great things to reflect on. But I think ultimately, you know, we really want our goal to be to protect our peace. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but also to really give some genuine, authentic insights into what this experience is. Um, has looked like yeah this journey this journey mm -hmm. yeah yeah because it's yes. been a journey for yes. sure yes yeah so a fun one though cheers to 100 cheers. subscribers make sure you guys like comment turn on your notifications let your friends and family know let your people know come and join us get in on these good conversations y'all yeah. it's me bay and jay signing out all right bye Next time.